Hi, I'm Hillary Thompson, and I'm here with Ron Tugna, the head coach and owner of the Kempel 73s. And they had quite an exciting season uh, this year, so we decided to bring him in and talk to, talk to him a little bit about that. So, hi, Ron. Hi. How hi. are you, Hillary? Good, how are you? <laughs> Great. Um, so, you've been with the 73s since 2012. Yep. Um, what, why did you make the decision to, um, you know, come and buy into the 73s? Well, I was, um, uh, I spent quite a bit of time playing for the Ottawa Senators, and I lived in Stittsville, and uh, we decided to go back to our uh, home on the, the water in Peterborough, because uh, we missed it there. And then we didn't realize that when we moved away, how many friends we had missed back here. So we basically went back to Peterborough for four years and we started to realize we were losing touch with our good friends. Uh, even though we're only three hours away, it's, it seems strange, but you just don't uh, see people enough. And the opportunity came up, uh, and I've always been a hockey person my whole life, so the yeah. opportunity came up to, to purchase the Kempton 73s. And um, I decided to go ahead and, and do that. That way we can come back into the area and. and you know, reunite with our friends and continue our, with our uh, friendships. So you were living in um, Ottawa before? or, or you In were Stittsville. In Stittsville, okay. Yeah, we lived in Great. Stittsville, which was nice and close to the rink. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, so the idea is my, when you get out to the lake and it's the middle of winter and there's nothing out there but wolves and coyotes, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think uh, my wife Lisa said, I think I need to see some other human beings because yeah. you're boring me to death. So yeah. we, we decided to come back. That's great. And your son has played for the 73s, is that correct? My oldest one is now in Minnesota, uh, in Winona, at uh, St. Mary's uh, University. Okay. Uh, he's playing still and he's doing his schooling. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, I think that's a real advantage of playing hockey is that gives you something every day you love playing hockey but you can still get your schooling done of course. and that's what he's doing there and, uh, he's finding it difficult he said it's uh, he's been out of school for three years so to, to go and get started up again it's been a little bit of a transition for him but yeah. he's uh, he's starting to excel now and he's doing well um, the youngest one is uh, he's gonna be 20 uh, this May and uh, he's got one more year to go and he'll probably do the same he'll be going down south somewhere to play and yeah. um, and get their education. That's nice that uh, you know you have a little bit of a legacy going on. The, your, both your sons play hockey as well. So. Yeah, they, well, I, I, they just we just couldn't keep them away. Yeah, of you course. You know they they're in rinks their whole lives and and of course all their other friends were playing hockey and so uh, it's been a good fit. But it's also kept them out of trouble. Yeah. You know the, it keeps them busy, keeps them involved in team sports and and uh, with the amount of traveling we've done. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, you know it's been good for them to be able to find new friends immediately through a hockey team. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, what do you like most about coaching, um, you know, junior A hockey team? Well, I coached um, growing up. I've coached younger kids uh, in the last two years. My first two years of junior. It yeah. is a little bit of a transition. It's different. There, um, there's a lot going on in their lives. Yeah. You know, and I always thought that it would just be hockey going on in their lives, but, you know, from girlfriends yeah. and <laughs> keeping their marks up and making sure that uh, they're keeping their options open to be able to go down south to, to get a scholarship. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of pressure on them, uh, you know, and it seems to come and go. Mm -hmm. uh, some days they seem more pressure than others because they're not getting what they need to get done. and. Um, and then there's days where they can be kids again and they laugh and joke, but there's just a lot of, um, you know, pressure on these guys to, to figure out what they're doing in their lives and trying to be kind of somewhat of a coach, but also a little bit of a father figure to them because they're away from home. You know, okay. it's the first time they, a lot of them, well, half our team would have been from outside the area okay. and they're away from home and they don't have that guidance of their parents and, you know, you, you find you, you're saying the same things you say to your own kids. Make good decisions. Make good choices. Yeah. Get to bed at the right time. Make sure you're eating properly and just things like that. Because and they go, yeah, I haven't been eating properly. I haven't been feeling good. And you're like, oh, you know. But it's kind of like raising a bunch of your own kids. Yeah. So where do they uh, stay when they're away from home? They build it. There's families. Okay. There's fantastic families in the area that have taken them in. They give them a bedroom. They feed them and and. You know, our rule of thumb's always been when there needs to be shoveling, you're you're in good shape, get the yeah. shovel, get out there and you know, be a part of the family. And yeah. uh, 
it's 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 a fantastic thing. I've done it myself. I've built it before when I was a younger player, and mm -hmm. um, those those people are now my children's second set of grandparents. They yeah. call them grandma and grandpa. And, um, at, when the year ends and our guys just like it's time to go home, a lot of these billet families cry. Oh. You know, so it's kind of they all have little kids, and of course they play mm -hmm. mini sticks with their little kids, and the kids are crying, the parents are crying, but hopefully. Um, the ones that are, are, are young enough to come back, they do come back and we put them back in there again. Well, that's quite the experience for, for a young guy. And they're, you know, late, late teens, early 20s? Well, you could be, um, the billet kids would have to be at least uh, 17 turning 18. Okay. Uh, and the last year you could play here is 20 turning 21. Okay. Um, so there's it's quite a wide range. Uh, it's, it's neat to see, you know, in the dressing room you have, uh, you know, 16, 17 year old guys communicating with 20, 21 year old guys. And um, this year's groups, especially, uh, we had a great leadership group. And for them to help uh, the younger guys to, to, to kind of grow into young men and yeah. say, I've been where you are and it's not easy. I know you're out there against guys with full beards and, yeah. and you know, but, you know, believe me, you're going to be okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, and so the, the goal of these guys, most of them, is to get scholarships and go off and play hockey at university? Yep. Uh, live, live the dream and yeah. not, not ever have a job. Just go play hockey and yeah. then people maybe give you money to do it. And I think that that's what they all aspire to, to have. But, yeah. but the, the idea though is if it doesn't work out, you've now gone and you've gone to a good institution and whether it's in Canada or the U.S., uh, got your education and mm -hmm. you come out of there and hopefully you find a good job. Yeah, you have good, lots of good options. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this year's season. So yeah. going into it, um, did you have any expectations um, for the season? I did. Um, you know, I, I've tried to instill that every year you come into season planning to win the championship. Yeah. Um, regardless of players coming back, uh, you, you kind of set the tone of we're here to win the championship and you know could be a month in you say I don't think that's going to happen mm -hmm. but um, you know we, we could have said that this year because we got off to a slow start but um, our second half was the best in the league we were the best team in the league in the second half yeah. so therefore we started to believe a little bit and at this age it's uh, um, when kids start to believe they get confident and they play better and you know, they, they find their pickup lines and their girlfriends work better and they're just more <laughs> confident and then they, they seem to perform better. So yeah. um, we started to really notice that in the second half and I think that, um, you know, we, we had our chance but to, to win you have to stay healthy. And we had a lot of injuries, key injuries late and um, I think that that affected our, our playoff run. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, what, what was the kind of turning point that you saw from, you know, you said you were off to a slow start and then you kind of like really picked it up at the end. Well, I think, um, as I alluded to earlier, the, the leadership group, um, mm -hmm. you know, at the beginning of the year, it was, it was me being the leader and me doing all the talking and, and, and saying the way we need to do things. And then all of a sudden it was like, we started to notice that that leadership group started to, to reinforce what we were saying and we weren't saying it anymore, they were saying it. Mm -hmm. And I think that it means more when it comes from the players than it does from the coach. Uh, so that's when we started to notice, uh, I said to the guys, I said, it's almost like you're coaching yourselves now. Yeah. You know you know what you're supposed to do and we no longer need to come in the room and scream and holler at you because you yourselves already know and the leadership group knows and, and they're, they're taking care of it. They're not um, you know, waiting for us to come in and, and, and scream and holler, they're, they're taking care of it in the room. So, that's when I think it was probably you know, shortly before Christmas. I think a lot of the players were excited about going home and getting back to their families for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And you know they were looking towards that. And then I started to hear, guys, we still got two weeks of playing. And, and I started to hear them take control. And that was, uh, to me, probably the turning point. That's awesome. So um, what are you, now it's the season's over. Yeah. Um, so. Do you have any goals or plans for the next season? Well, we have to, there's always surprises on someone that doesn't come back that we thought would come back. Okay. So, um, you know, we have scouts and we have uh, staff that get out and, 
and, and try to find, we have local and, and, and uh, you know, out of town players. So uh, that's the goal right now is to fill our lineup with the team that we think is going to be the best team it can be next mm -hmm. year and be prepared for when somebody says they're not coming back that we had hoped that they would and, and be ready to replace that player and, and hopefully not lose a stride and, and keep going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the four years that we've been here, we've gotten better every single year yeah. and we need to continue that path. Yeah, um, some of your guys are probably headed off to university, yep. so you're losing some of them. So, um, um, can you, who, who, are you, who are you losing? And yeah, we have three 20 year olds, um, uh, Jason Tackett's going to go to Fair State. He got a, a full scholarship, and uh, Cameron Russell is going to Genesio, uh, which is um, a school down in the New York area. And uh, a local player, uh, Brandon Cole, who was one of our uh, assistant captains this year. Um, I think that he's going to officially just do his schooling here in, in Ottawa and play men's league hockey and and eat chicken wings and drink beers after he plays, rather than you know so. Uh, I laugh and joke with the guys. I said, you know, no matter how, what level you play, you always end up in the beer league. Yeah. So you, al you always end up in the beer league, no matter how high a level yeah. you play. And, and Brandon Cole was funny. He says, I think I'm going to start the beer league early. <laughs> so, great kid. And, uh, and, and I'm sure he'll be around the rink. Don't come visit me. So. Yeah, he won't stop doing, doing what he loves. No, no. But he's going to have to work. He says he's got to work. He wants to get his schooling. So, you know, it's just... Now, without hockey, maybe you'll have more time to, to work and get a schooling done to yeah. get ready. Um, I have to ask, um, how has you know your background, you have quite an extensive background in the NHL, yeah. so um, what have you, what from that have you brought to kind of coaching and owning a team? Well, I just think uh, past experiences, um, you know, maybe things that I went through or even, um, you know, other players, uh, that I played with, um, you know, and, it's, and as I said, it's not just the hockey, it's it's outside, you know, maybe I, I played with a player that uh, got, got a DUI, right. you know, and, and, I, and I can explain how this turned this guy's life around, you know, he was, uh, all of a sudden he was a suspended player, and, and you, and you kind of try to, to, to guide him and, and say, you know, it can happen to you, mm -hmm. you know, and then from the on ice stuff, I can, I can say, you know, Joe Sackick, one of my good friends, uh, was the hardest working guy in practice every day. He was our best player, but he was also our hardest working. And, mm -hmm. and, and I can kind of install stuff like that just to, because uh, I've been there. Right. And, and I think that that has credibility and, and you know, therefore the, the players are, are willing, more than willing to listen. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so last question, um, what are you looking forward to most for the next year? Well, I think, um, as I said, continue on the path of uh, improving. Um, I, I, I don't believe that you just turn a franchise around in, in a year or two. It's going to take some time. And uh, this year we got our first playoff win in, in the franchise history since it's been here as a junior A team. And, that, you know, it's showing that we're doing the right things. Uh, it'd be nice to make a, bit, a little bit of a bigger step next year and, and really challenge to, to win. Um, you know, so, you know, the goal, the goal is to win, you know, and I think that uh, we're, we think as long as we continue on the path we are, then we're going to have our chance one day. That's great. Well, good luck in recruiting those new players uh, for the next season, and thanks for coming in to talk to us today. Thanks, sir. Thanks, thanks a lot. All right.